Well, hello, 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 everybody. Hello, squatties. How are you guys doing? Give me a thumbs up so that I know that you can hear me. It is windy today in the state of South Carolina. So let me know that you can hear me. Give me a thumbs up. If this is the first time that you are joining us, welcome. Welcome to Megan, Duchess of Efficacy World Podcast. I am your host, Special K Thoughts, AKA better known as Special K in the world of X, formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> Welcome, 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 everybody. Today, we are going to have a family chat. Because, of course, as always, there's always something going on in the world of success, isn't there? There's always something going on, always, right? But we love it, and we're happy because we love to talk about our faves, don't we? <laughs> Again, if this is the first time that you're joining us, welcome to Megan, Duchess of Advocacy World Podcast. Uh, if you want to subscribe to this channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit the thumbs up button. What we're doing right now is we're gonna have a live podcast entitled Success Talk where, you know, the squatties, we have a family chat. We have a family chat about our faves, the Duke and Duchess of Success, Prince Harry and Meghan. So I'm looking in the chat right now, and um, I see a lot of the dedicated squatties. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I see you. And I appreciate you being here, and I, I appreciate your support as well. All right, so those of you who are in the chat, continue to chat away. Let me know where you're from, where you be. Because, you know, we are an international squad. I mean, we speak multi-languages, don't we? <laughs> welcome Spanish squatties, welcome French squatties, welcome to the Caribbean squatties, welcome Asian squatties, and of course, welcome American squatties. I love you, I love you all, our North American family, Canadian squatties, Australian squatties, everybody, all squatties all across the world. We represent the globe, damn it. Yes, we do. We represent the globe. We're everywhere. We multiply by the millions every day. <laughs> and of course, our UK squatties as well. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get started because I know it's Sunday and um, some of you have already got your praise on today and some of you will get your praise on later on today, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so today's episode of Success Talk. Oh, 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 I almost forgot. <clears throat> Let me bring it back. If this is the first time that you're joining us, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do our disclaimer alert. 
Okay, so disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. We here at Megan, Duchess of Advocacy, we are fans and stands of the Duke and Duchess of Success, Prince Harry and Megan. All right, we're fanatical about these two. Okay, we don't do both sides here. We don't like the mother royals. We don't. And I'm talking about the royals that are in the UK. All right. Yes, I'm talking about Baldy Locks. <laughs> I still can't believe that. Um... <laughs> we'll talk about it later on, but I still can't believe that a so called journalist actually wrote an article thinking that they called the success squad out for referring to Prince William <laughs> as baldy locks. <laughs> Woo. Oh my goodness. But um back to the disclaimer alert. You know, like I said, we don't we don't do both sides here. We don't ride both sides of the fence. We just don't do it. Okay. There's just too much heat, too much hateration against our faves, okay? So no fence riding, no doing both sides. There's no neutrality here. Nope, we don't do Sweden here, okay? We, we don't. So no, we're not fair, no. No, hell no, we're not fair, no. You can accuse us of being our unfair all you want. We don't care, we don't care, okay? There's no balance here, okay? See, I'm a Libra. Throughout my life, I constantly look for balance. But when it comes to the Duke and Duchess of Sexes, hell no. There's no balance. There's no compromise. Okay? There's, there's none of that bullshit. None. Zilch. Nuka. Never. None. All right? We can't stand monarchists. Okay? But one thing I will say about the true monarchists, the real ones, the ones that are true to the game, all right, when the, when those royals be doing bullshit, they call it out. <laughs> but anyway, we 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 don't like monarchists. We oh my goodness, we can't stand rural reporters, rural commentators. Jesus, we can't stand them. Okay, so if you're in agreement with that then hey, stick around, get yourself some food, get yourself something to drink, and enjoy the live podcast. If if that's not what you're all about, then get the fuck out. Leave. Go. Bye. Bless your backs. And see, I already dropped, the, dropped an F-bomb already today. <laughs> I'm, not, not even, I'm not even mad. I'm not even upset. I'm really just honestly having fun. But I guess I just want clarity for people who have not listened to this live podcast before. And another thing, okay, because somebody sent me an email and I, I, I spit out my yak when I read the email. Somebody sent me an email, you know, saying, hey, hey, Special K Thoughts, you know, the way you go in on Prince Harry's family, um, if he were to listen to your podcast, don't you, wouldn't you be, um, wouldn't, wouldn't you feel bad if he heard the things that you said about his family? Oh my gosh, that would be no, no, okay, no, I would not be, absolutely not, no, all right, so there you go, all right, the name of this episode is called, We Will Not Be Silent. Hashtag Success Squad. We will not 
be silent. You can attack us all you want. We will not be silent. You got, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I don't know what the hell makes these rural reporters, rural commentators who have these big platforms writing these trash ass rural books and writing these trash ass articles in the Daily Mail, the Sun. I don't know what the hell makes them think that the success squad is afraid of them. The success squad is not like punk ass King Charles. Okay? That's the punk that is afraid of these rural commentators and these rural reporters who write for the Daily Mail and the Sun and the Daily Express and the Mirror, all those trash ass British tabloids. The person that is afraid of you guys. The person that is afraid of the British tabloids is punk-ass King Charles. Okay? It's not the sexist squad. You guys can write articles about us every day. As a matter of fact, please do. Write another article. And then write another one and another one. As a matter of fact, I want to see hashtag sexist squad on the front cover of the Daily Mail and the Sun and the Daily Express all at the same damn time. That's what I want to see. All right. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and start off with some good news, some wonderful news, because you know, one thing about our faves, (laughs) right? They always surprise us. And it's obvious that there just are no leaks when our faves do something. I mean, there's just no leaks, right? So news came out (laughs) that our favorite Duchess, Megan, the Duchess of Success, she visited the Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, okay? to support their Make March Matter fundraising campaign. Isn't that awesome? We had no idea. We had no clue. Okay. Any squatties in the chat who live in the LA area, was there, did you hear anything about this before the news dropped? I don't think so. But um, my goodness. I know when I saw this, I was like, yay, I was so happy. Like, it really made my day. Um, Patients and staff were treated to a very special story time. Okay, and if you look right there on your screen, you see some pictures of Megan, Duchess of Success, with children. Let's see. Next slide. Isn't that nice? (laughs) Los Angeles, California. So Megan, the Duchess of Sexes, of course, she was all smiles and she recently visited the Children's Hospital Los Angeles for a special story time session. All right, and I am reading this article off of KTLA. Okay, I used to watch KTLA all the time when I lived in California. So the reason why I'm reading from this is because I know that they're going to report facts, okay? Videos and photos shared show the Duchess, and this actually happened on March 21st, wow, as part of the hospital's month-long Make March Matter campaign. Uh, The Duchess, she read the patient's favorite books like Rosie the, the Riveter, Pete the Cat, and I Saw a Cat. Uh, The Duchess also helped some kiddos with 
STEM activities tied to each book that lets patients explore counting, colors, problem solving, and more. Okay, so Make March Matter. This is actually an annual fundraising campaign, okay, for, it's spelled C-H-L-A, and I believe that's Children's um, Hospital in L.A., that unites celebrities, businesses, and the greater community in support of its mission of creating hope and building healthier futures. And of course, the funds raised will help ensure the hospital can provide sick and critically injured children with the best quality care. Okay, and, and you see right now on your screen, the Duchess is reading the children uh, one of the stories that they love. Uh, these are actually stories. These are actually books that the children uh, love to read. All right. And there's another beautiful picture, and um, of course the the outfit that uh, the Duchess has on. You know, you know, we squatties, right? We we be on it <laughs> when the Duchess makes an appearance, right? We we be on it, finding out, you know, what designer um, is she wearing? And you know, when I saw these pictures, you know, immediately I was like, wow, we have seen the Duchess. In, in in this before, right? In this ensemble before. And many squatties were right. It's the same ensemble that uh, the Duchess wore when um, uh, she and Prince Harry and uh, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet went um, to the Queen's, what was the, what was it? The Queen's, was it her birthday? <laughs> I can't remember. Was it the Papillon Jubilee? What, what, what was it? What, was it the Queen's birthday? It was one of those major events that uh, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan went to, and she had on this same ensemble. I believe when that picture was taken, it was Lilibet's birthday, if I'm not mistaken. They were coming back from visiting the Queen. Um or that picture just could have been them coming back from visiting the queen. I don't think the Duchess wore that ensemble on Lilibet's birthday. She, actually on Lilibet's birthday, which was her first birthday, um, the Duchess had on um, a very casual uh, outfit. Was it the Jubilee? Thank you, Squatties. So it was it was the Queen's Jubilee. Um, but uh, wonderful, just wonderful and see, at the end of the day, hashtag service is universal. Uh, Prince Harry and, and Duchess Meghan, they're doing what they said that they always were going to do, which was service. Okay. And um, this right here should be nothing new to anybody, really. Um, it shouldn't be a surprise that Meghan would uh, go to the children's hospital and read them stories. It should be no surprise that... Uh, you know, she would participate in a fundraising campaign at the Children's Hospital of L.A. Um, you know, if those other royals weren't such assholes and racists, uh, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan would be doing the same thing in, U in the U.K. But since they want to be assholes, racist, you know, and, and, and act like ball-headed bitches, you know, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are here in America. Uh, you know, fundraising for children's hospitals. So there you go. Bloop. <laughs> but it's true, right? It's true. Everything that I'm saying, in my opinion, in Special K Thoughts opinion, is true, right? If the Mother Royals and their staff, the royal courtiers, weren't jealous, right? didn't have jealousy, envy, weren't racist, um, you know, and, and assholes, pompous assholes, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex would be doing exactly what they're doing in America over in the UK. They would be visiting children's hospitals. They would be, you know, help supporting fundraising campaigns, um, And it is what it is. Okay. <laughs> and you know what cracks me up? 
is the fact that when the Duchess of Sussex does things like this, right? All of a sudden, it's a PR stunt. Oh, it's a PR stunt. <laughs> well, when them welfare queens go to children's hospitals and take pictures, what the hell is that? It's a PR stunt, right? It's a PR stunt. <laughs> Whatever you accuse the Duke and Duchess of Success of doing, you can say the exact same thing about Thurs welfare queens. But you know what the difference is? What is the difference? I'll tell you what the difference is. This picture that you see right here, if you are watching on your smart TV or your smartphone, just whatever, this picture right here that you see, the Duchess of Sussex helping fundraise and reading books to children at the Children's Hospital in LA. The difference with this picture and a picture that you will see with the welfare queens visiting children's hospital, the difference is taxpayers are not funding the Duke and Duchess of Sussex when they perform a service. But those welfare queens, taxpayers are funding that. That's what the difference is. Okay. Nobody in the United States of America had to pay a penny for the Duchess of Sussex to go visit the Children's Hospital of LA. But I guarantee you, people who are struggling to feed their children in the UK, people who are struggling to pay their rent in the UK, People who are struggling to put food on the table, clothes on their children's back, people who are struggling in the UK that are working two jobs, they have to pay for those welfare queens when they go visit children's hospitals. That's the difference. Cope. All right. <laughs> ah, you know, I'm always on X, right? I can't help it. I'm always on X. But um, when the pictures came out with the Duchess of Sussex, right, visiting the Children's Hospital of L.A., um, <laughs> this X user posted this. And let me tell you something. When I highlight different posts from X, formerly known as Twitter. I always make sure that I purposely look for posts from non-squatties, okay? So this user right here, okay? Myst it's Mystic Toxin something, right? I, I really can't say the username. Um, I don't know how to say it, but they post this, right? This is so funny. So they post this after the pictures came out of the Duchess of Sussex visiting, you know, the children's hospital, right? <laughs> this person says, <laughs> the first thing I notice is how this is raw footage and there is no AI discrepancies. See, 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 <laughs> see, they want to blame everything on the sexist squad, right? They want to blame everything on the sexist squad. Okay. Everything. Okay. No, th 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 this user right here is not a squatty. This user right here is not a squatty. There's nothing, it, 
that stands out with this user that says, oh, she or he is a part of the sex squad. Absolutely nothing. Okay. I went through this user's timeline. No, nah, nothing in regards to no posts, nothing in regards to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Okay. This, this user right here is a non squatty. Okay. <laughs> I love it. All right. Let's see. <laughs> That's how I felt. All right. All right, so now I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about this, right? Um, you know, this whole PDD fiasco. Um, <laughs> Sean Diddy Combs, right? Puff Daddy, whatever he goes by. Um, I've never really been a fan of his. Just never. There's just always been something about that guy that I've just never liked. Um, I think that he's produced some really good music. Uh, but there was just something about him that I've never liked. And it appears that <laughs> with all the news that's coming out about him, that, yeah, you know, my, my, you know, gut feeling was right. Okay. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty. But, uh, you know, uh, there's some music producer that is suing Sean Diddy Combs, right? There's a lot of people actually that are suing. Sean Diddy Combs. Oh, I see some people in the chat saying that she is a squatty. Really? I've never seen her before. All right, a squatty that's got skeletons? <laughs> well, you know, everybody's, you know, we're not all the same, right? We're not all the same. Everybody's different. I just never noticed a squatty that's got like skeletons in their user ID, but all right, cool. But back to the story. Um, Sean Diddy Combs, right? P. Diddy, whatever he's calling himself. Like I was saying before, I've never really been a fan of his. I think that he has produced some great music, though. Um, there's some songs that he's produced uh, for Mary J. Blige that I just absolutely love. So, um, But he's being sued by a lot of people. But there's a music producer that uh, Diddy is being sued by. And, um, you know, the, 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 the same typology, right? Sexual assault, sexual battery, all that, all that stuff. Um, and like I was saying, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty, right? But um, um, this music producer, he 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 filed this lawsuit, and there's like a 50 page, right, <laughs> um, court papers, uh, and um, unfortunately, uh, in the court papers, uh, Prince Harry is named. OK. And of course, when that news came out, you know, the British tabloid press, uh, they jumped on it right away um, and wrote a story about it. But the picture that they highlighted, they cropped out Prince William. OK. <laughs> and that should not be a shocker to anybody, right? We all know that that's something that the British tabloid press would do, right? Okay, I'm looking in the chat. Now, some people are saying that that person's not a squatty. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> what that person posted, I loved it. So back to the story. Um, so the picture that you see right here, if you're looking on your smartphone or on your, uh, you know, your laptop or your phone, um, they cropped Prince William out, <laughs> right? Just cropped him out, okay? With a huge headline that says Prince Harry name and Sean Diddy Combs, you know, sexual assault lawsuit, okay? And if you look at the picture, Prince Harry looks mighty young in this picture, okay? And I believe that this picture um, was taken uh, with Sean Diddy Combs and Kanye West during Princess Diana's. Uh, they were having a celebration for Princess Diana, right? And um, this party right here actually is Prince William's party. Here we go again, covering for Prince William, right? 
This is actually Prince William's party. Okay, Prince William hosted this party. But of course, uh, the British tabloid press, they jumped on it right away. <laughs> Boy, did they jump on it. And um, the Telegraph, one of our favorite British tabloid press, um, wrote a story and um, really tried to hype it up. But when they wrote the story with this type of headline, right, you could tell that they were very, very careful with their wording because they knew that they did not want their asses to get sued. Okay, so this is the picture. This is the original picture. See the difference? This is the picture that the Telegraph ran with. But that right there is the original picture. Prince William is actually on the left side of Kanye West. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, if you read the, the, the article, the Telegraph article, which I did not read, but um, inside the article, you know, it states that the prince is named just once in the lawsuit. Um, it does not suggest he had any knowledge of the allegations or was involved, but instead names him as an example of the type of well-known figures to whom the defendants might have had access to. Okay, it's their understanding that the Duke has only met Combs once and the Telegraph understands and has never attended any of his parties or concerts, right? So this picture was taken back in 2007, um, you know, when Prince Harry posed with photographs of Prince William and Combs and Kanye West after the two rappers were formed at the concert uh, for Princess Diana. So, um, but it just goes to show you, you know, how the British tabloid press is. Now, it's my understanding that the Telegraph is not supposed to be a tabloid press, that they're supposed to be one of the more credible newspapers uh, in the UK. I, I call bullshit on that. Um, so anyway, a lot of squatters are familiar with Christine, I think it's Meinzer. Um, she has a podcast on Spotify. It's called The Daily Fail. Um, I listen to it every once in a while. And to me, it's pretty good. Um, and she states, uh, she posted this on X, stating that convenient how the Telegraph cropped Prince William out of this photo in order to paint Prince William as the villain. This is not real journalism, right? Uh, the Telegraph is pro-William propaganda. Exactly. They all are. Right? They all are. So there you go. All right. So we are continuing um, to talk about how the sex of squad is being targeted, right? There's a huge target on our backs. Again, this is nothing new, right? Right, squaddies? This is nothing new. This is nothing new, okay, about, you know, there being a huge target on the sex of squad back. Okay. They've done this before. There's been other times where, um, certain rural gossip hacks will write articles about the sex of squad and, and they will demand that, uh, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, you know, condemn us and separate uh, from us. <laughs> Prince Harry and Meghan are not with us. Okay, they act like that we could call up the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and chop it up with them anytime we want. Like, what is wrong with these people? Okay, none of us have access to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Okay, none of us. Okay, it's not like we can call up Prince Harry and say, hey, can you meet us at the Santa Barbara Polo Club and we can do a, a match of, um, we can do a game, a polo game or something. Like, what is wrong with these people? Okay. The reason why they target us is because they cannot stand the fact that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have a huge international worldwide bona fide fan base. They hate it. They hate it. They do not understand how come their hateration, smear, vilification, dehumanization campaign has not worked. Okay. See, the reason why they don't understand it has not worked is because the British tabloid press, they are so used to people in the UK believing their bullshit, believing their propaganda, 
scam. Okay. So anyway, so this writer, I think her name is Grace McCaskill, something like that, whatever. Trash. So she writes this article. I believe this article is for the sun, right? Success squalid, something like that, whatever. Inside the sinister world of the Success Squad, online trolls making Kate Middleton's life a misery with bullying and lies. <laughs> making Kate Middleton's life a misery with bullying and lies. Really? Are you serious? No, the, what, what the headline should say. Right? Is that Kingston Palace lied, therefore causing Kate Middleton's life to be miserable. That's what the headline should say. Okay, the hashtag sex squad make outlandish claims about Kate in defense of their heroine, <laughs> Megan, the Duchess of Success. Okay. Like, really, like, come on now. Come on now, Grace. Grace, writer for the sun. Come on now, Grace. You and your trash ass cohorts. You guys weaponize Kate Middleton, Princess Catherine. Every day, they get the Duchess of Success. Every day. You guys weaponize Kate Middleton against the Duchess of Success. You guys do it in your sleep. The Duchess of Success can't move. If there's something going on with Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Success can't breathe. If there's something going on with Kate Middleton. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't read this article. Um, I just was reading what people had posted. And it's my understanding that in this article, Grace, who's supposed to be a journalist, actually <laughs> reported that we refer to Prince William is Baldy Locks. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> like who would write such, who would write that? Like you were talking about a fan base, Grace. We are a fan base. We're no different. Well, actually we are different because you know, there's no fan base like the Sex Squad, right? But it's like, come on, you got the barbs. Right? You got, um, what do you call Beyonce's fan base? I can't remember. The Barb's is Nicki Minaj's fan base, right? Who, who, what is uh, Beyonce's fan base called? I can't remember. Somebody will say it in the chat. Um, but you got all different types of fan bases, right? You got the Biebs, Justin Bieber's fan base. There's all different types of hardcore fan bases. I mean, to me, it's ridiculous to be writing articles about a fan base. How juvenile and how petty, Grace. How juvenile and how petty writing about somebody's fan base. Thank you. The beehive. Okay. Beyonce's fan base is the beehive. Right? Like, seriously, think about it now. Seriously, those of you who are listening, those of you who are in the chat, who writes about somebody's fan base? Who targets somebody's fan base? <laughs> How petty and pathetic. Can you be, Grace? Let's 
So again, within Grace's article, you know, she she targets the sexist squad. You know, um, I guess we made Prince William's life miserable because we referred to him as Bolly Locks. Um, you know, she insinuates that we were the ones that started uh, the hashtag Kate Gate. I don't think we're the ones that started that hashtag. I really honestly don't. They they don't want to believe that this whole thing about Kate Middleton and the kill notification and, and all that, that was a worldwide story that just caught on fire. But um, And she also stated that Christopher Boozy is our leader. <laughs> Christopher Boozy, she said he is our leader. My God. The Sexist Squad has been around since what, 2016? I didn't join the Sexist Squad till 2018. Okay. But it's my understanding it's been around since 2016. Christopher Boozy, really? <laughs> so Christopher Boozy, I mean, I love the picture on the right. I mean, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, he's dressed up in this whole military. Uh, uniform with these big, huge, <laughs> exaggerated military medals. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, let me take a drink real quick. I mean, he really takes it there with the picture. <clears throat> but Christopher Boozy says, I woke up this morning to discover the British press has promoted me to the leader of the Sexist Squad. Does the title come with benefits and a 401k plan? Do I have any official duties or is it just a title? Do I at least get a body double? <laughs> Ooh. That last line, do I at least get a body double? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I mean, the way I cackled when I read that last line, do I at least get a body double? Woo, child. All right. <coughs> so, Christopher Boozy, and those of you who don't know him, that's very, very hard to believe that there's anybody in the sexual squad who doesn't know who Christopher Boozy is. But, um, you know, he's a tech guy. He he really honestly is. He's a tech guy. Very good tech guy. Um, and he runs Spoutable. Uh, I do have an account on Spoutable. Um, I rarely post over there. Uh, I feel like I need to be on X more. Um, you know, because it just seems like the news about the Duke and Duchess of Success is, uh, you know, posted there. Um, a lot quicker whenever they do something um, that we find out about the latest news about them, you know, quicker than we do on Spoutable. But uh, I could be wrong. I probably just need to spend more time on Spoutable. But, uh, you know, he's he's the guy that, that started uh, Spoutable, um, which it's my understanding is very successful, which is awesome. Um. And he's the guy that really, really uh, did research on these hate accounts in regards to Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. He's the one that really called out and was able to um, present credible evidence about the organized hate smear campaign against the Duchess of Sussex, right? He, 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 he did a lot of research and he was able to really, really call out. How many accounts was it? I mean, it was crazy. It was like, I think it was like 70 accounts, if I'm not mistaken, or 83 accounts, something like that that were like all working together, right? 
and they were the ones that were responsible for just consistently posting negative stuff about the Duchess of Success. I mean, there was one account, right, where he that he zoomed in on that every hour on the hour, they were posting sometimes two, three, four, five negative posts per hour about the Duchess of Success, right? And then there were there were like the large accounts and then there were the minor accounts. And I mean, he just really did a deep dive in, into that whole, how there were these, I don't want to say bot farms, but because at the end of the day, like he said, you can call them bots, but these are real people behind these accounts, right? There are real people behind these accounts. But um, he was the one that was able to identify all of these accounts that were hate targeting the Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry as well, right? And he also called out <laughs> a lot of the YouTube accounts, right? And were able to get some of those YouTube accounts suspended forever, okay? But um, I agree with that. I think that he is. Marshar says that Christopher Boozy has been a godsend for Princess Megan. I mean, he 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 really has. Um, but because he's done that, right? The British tabloids have really zoomed in on him. Okay, and he has faced a lot of backlash. And personal wise, it's my understanding that his family has had to put up with some, you know, very scary um, harassment just because he has called a lot of these accounts out, a lot of these hate targeted accounts out. And, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of these hate targeted accounts, especially on YouTube, these guys make money. They make a lot of money. And when you mess with people's money, right, people get dangerous. Okay. So it's my understanding, you know, that he's he's faced and 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 dealt with um some scary incidences, not only just towards him, but towards his family as well. And it's so sad. It's so sad that it has to come to that. You know what I mean? It's it, it's so sad. A lot of squatties have had to deal with, you know, death threats. And there's even been some squatties where people have actually come to their jobs just because they're defending the Duke and Duchess of Success. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I mean, some of the emails I get, <laughs> it's like, Really? Just because I'm doing a podcast and somebody you don't like, you're going to send me an email calling me all kinds of bees and, and the N-word and all that just because I, I, I like and support the Duke and Duchess of Success? It's like people need to get a life, okay? But anyway, back to what's on your screen right here. Um, Mr. Christopher Boozy, okay? One of the reasons why these British tabloids are really zooming in, on, zooming in on him right now and making him the poster child of the Success Squad is because Christopher Boozy says that this Prince William and Kate Middleton walkabout at the, at the farm, <laughs> he's saying it's a hoax. He says it's not true. It's not them. What he's really saying is, is that he knows for a fact that it's not Kate Middleton. He's not too sure about the guy being Prince William yet, right? Hi, Thrive with Stride. How are you doing? Right, but he's definitely saying that that woman is not Kate Middleton. Okay. He's like, no, that's not her. That's not. 
And see, one thing about Christopher Boozy, he he's not going to put his credibility on the line like that, guys. He's just not. He is not going to put his credibility on the line like that. He's saying it's a hoax. It's not her. Okay. And he's not the only one saying it. Anybody go on TikTok? There's all kinds of people who are non-squatties on TikTok saying that that is not her. Okay. He's not the only one that's saying it. All right. And here he says, Christopher Boozy, I have written three threads outlining why I am confident the farm video is a hoax. Okay. All right. So here we go. All right. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. I believe this is an article from... I'm not too sure if this is from the Sun or the Daily Mail, but they're both targeting him and they both are writing articles about him. Okay. And in this article, it says vile slurs about Kate's about Kate, death threats to Meg's enemies, trolls who are proudly hashtag sex squad. I believe this is the article from the Sun. Um First of all, nobody in the sex squad has made death threats towards Kate Middleton. That is just a bull faced lie. Okay. <laughs> but I guarantee you, so called Kate Middleton fans have made death threats towards the Duchess of Sussex. I guarantee it. Okay. Think about it. Sex of Squad, do we talk about um Prince William and Kate Middleton's kids? We don't talk about those kids. We rarely comment about those kids. Right? Only time we may say a comment about them is when there's a picture release about them. But even then, though, we don't really comment about the Cambridge's kids. We don't. But all day, every day, those Kate Middleton fans comment about Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. And what's crazy about it is that there's no pictures released about them. <laughs> we don't get pictures released. In regards to Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, they don't put their children on a silver platter for the public to see. They don't display them like they're circus acts in the circus. Okay. But I guarantee you the Kate Middleton, and yes, they are. I call them Kate Middleton fans. I guarantee you they talk about Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet every day, even though they don't see pictures of them. So all this BS about death threats towards Kate Middleton, that is bullshit. Now, trust me, nobody in the sex squad has made no death threat towards Kate Middleton. That is so laughable. Okay. But you know what they're trying to do, right? You see what they're trying to do. Okay. They're trying to discredit Christopher Boozy. They're trying to make it seem like that the sexist squad were nothing but a bunch of trolls that want to cause harm to their precious, white, fragile, innocent, Princess Catherine, when really it's the other way around, when really it's Kate Middleton's fans who write death threats and troll 
Duchess Megan every damn day. You can go on X right now. I bet you there's some nasty, vulgar hashtag about the Duchess of Success. If it's not about her, it's about her kids. I guarantee it. Okay. All right. So Christopher Bruzzi, he posted this. People are in my DMs telling me Dan Wooten was talking about me. I asked what network was he on and learned he took shots at me from his YouTube channel. Sorry, I only respond to people who are at least semi-relevant. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Here was another one that cracked me up. Okay, Christopher Boozy, Richard Eden seems to imply that their month-long attacks on me were unrelated to racism and suggests I shut up. Oh, Richard Eden, he is such a pompous ass. Yes, it was rooted in racism, and no, I will not shut up. When faced with disinformation or bogus videos, I will leverage my platform to educate others. Amen. Amen. Just think about it, guys. If the tables were turned, right? If there was a video with Prince Harry and Meghan walking at some farm and it was obvious that it wasn't Meghan, okay, but their office was saying, no, it, it's absolutely Meghan, right? My God. The hateration backlash would be brutal. It would be brutal. Okay, brutal. It would be brutal if Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, had released a photo of her and her kids and the Associated Press issued a kill notification. Okay, it, it, it would be brutal if she done something like that. All right. So this one right here, and I hope he does it, Christopher Boozy. I'm seriously considering publishing a report on British tabloid journalists who use burner accounts for purposes beyond merely viewing content. <laughs> we all know that probably 99.9% .9 of British tabloid journalists have burner accounts. Okay, a lot of them have been busted out, called out, right? We all know Richard Eden has been called out. I believe Robert, is it Jobson? He's been called out on his burner account, right? We all know Dan Wooten's got burner accounts, okay? He's probably got like 20 of them, okay? I can't wait for this, man. I cannot wait, okay? Because he's going to call them out, all right? He's going to call them out. <laughs> so when he posts this, <laughs> look who responded. Oh, that's the next slide. Anyway. So this side right here, Christopher Boozy says, live view of Richard deleting tweets on his burner account. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. All right, so of course, Richard Eden, he responds, right? So he says, go ahead and make my day. Really? Are you serious, Richard Eden? Go ahead, make my day. Really? <laughs> Richard Eden, that is not the win that you think it is. That is not a clap back, dude. What type of clap back is that? Go ahead, make my day. What? <laughs> okay, Richard, okay. So there's you, sir, royally shady, and I know this is a squatty uh, post. Look at Maureen trying to take her earrings off. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is so funny. <laughs> See, this is Maureen. <laughs> 
Oh, that is so funny. But yes, they are. All right, now I'm looking in the chat. Yes, they are. They are messing with the wrong man. Right? They really are. They're messing with the wrong man, just like they're messing with the wrong squad. Okay? They're messing with the wrong man, and they're messing with the wrong squad. Um, I'm not too sure it makes the British press think that people like Christopher Boozy and the Sex Squad are just going to roll over and not fight back. I mean, do they really honestly think that the Sex Squad is just going to dismantle? Is that what they think? I, I, I don't know what they thought that the end game would be. I really honestly don't. Um, because they've done something like this before, right? <clears throat> they've done something like this before where they've written articles. May and it's mainly been Dan Wooten who've written articles about the Sex Squad. And I mean, I mean, if anything, our the fan base grew, right? The fan base just grew. So, <clears throat> I think Maureen looks better with the fro than Richard Eden does. <laughs> All right, so Aunt Esther, Aunt Esther is like, who, now, who is this special fool? Okay, she she she, she, she side eyeing Dan Wooten. Okay, <laughs> she's like, who's this idiot? <laughs> so, Dan Wooten, right? We all know. We all know. Okay, he's definitely had a fall from grace. Okay, he was investigated. It's my understanding that he was investigated for, I guess, sexual battery, rape. Um, and, you know, I guess there just wasn't enough evidence against him, right? Uh, but, you know, he, he blames the sex of squad. He blames the sex of squad for his downfall, right? Um, and so he claims that he did a special investigation on us. And he's been working on this special investigation for a long, long, long time. Okay. And, you know, this special investigation is about the success squad. And it's about how Harry and Megan's fans, how, you know, how we are and how we're the biggest trolls and that we're a gang. We're a trolling gang. Okay, we're a trolling gang of the internet. Yes, we are. We're the trolling gang of X. Okay. <laughs> and he's claiming that Harry and Megan, they're the forefront. Okay, they're the forefront of the sex of squad. And the sex of squad, you know, we're the biggest trolling gangs of the internet. And during his investigation, it, the shocking, I mean, the shocking, the shocking Reality about the sex of squad targeting Catherine and other Marco critics is finally, it's finally, oh my God, it's finally being revealed. Finally, he took a long, 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 long time investigating the sex of squad. And what he found out is that Megan and Harry, they are the forefront. They're the forefront of the sex of squad. The biggest trolling gang of the internet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Look at poor Anister. Look at her. She, she she looking at Dan Wooten like you stupid, dumb, fish eyed fool. <laughs> so Apparently, he did this expose, exposure of the sex of squad on YouTube. I didn't watch it. No way I can give him clicks. I didn't watch it. Um, and it's my understanding <laughs> he basically named Omid Scobie, Christopher Boozy, <laughs> 
Harry and Meghan as the leaders of the sexual squad. And it's like, dude, really? Are you serious right now? Really? And apparently he called out a squatty, right? There's there's this person that I guess was a squatty. She's gone now. I don't know what happened to her. But what was it? Sarah, Sarah something, Sarah Data. Help me out. She used to she used to host spaces, right? Had an accent. I'm not too sure where she was from. Uh, but she would host spaces. And I do remember she was the one that had put out um, a post on X saying that Dan Wooten was going to be called out or just just whatever the case may be, right? She was the one that put out that first post about Dan Wooten getting ready to be exposed and this, that, and the other, right? So he refers to that. And, um, you know, she's the cause of, 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 um, him getting labeled as this sexual predator or just whatever the case may be. No, Dan Wooten. The story broke when one of your accusers posted something on X saying that you raped them. That's when the story broke out. Okay. And then Byline Times wrote an article. Okay. But he's throwing all his eggs on this Sarah person. Right. And supposedly, and see, that's how come I don't participate in DM groups with squatties, right? That, that's, this is one of the main reasons why I don't participate in DM groups with squatties. Apparently, Sarah had was DMing different squatties. They had like a group, right? And there were certain squatties in this group that were talking. And apparently, that group was infiltrated. Okay, by a fake squatty who was reporting everything that these squatties were saying in this group to Dan Wooten. Okay, Dan is saying that he got in contact with Sarah, and Sarah basically, I'm not even too sure, basically, something about she was over her head and she got caught up and admitted that she wasn't telling the truth or something like that, right? But anyway, that account is closed. Okay. That person is gone. That account is closed. Okay. That's why I always say, be careful. (laughs) Okay. Be careful because there are certain squatties that I always side eye. I always side eye. Okay. And I'm talking about squatties who all of us, who just joined the movement and then bam, three months later, they got like five, 6,000 followers. You guys ever notice squatties like that on X? It's like they literally just joined the movement and they're hosting spaces. And one week they got like a thousand followers and the next week they got like 4,000. And then in a month they're up to like almost 8,000 followers. It's like, uh, uh, right? Be careful. Because there are all kinds of people trying to infiltrate the sex squad. Okay. Now, I don't take everything that Dan Wooten is saying as fact. I don't take everything that he's saying as truth. I really honestly don't. But that certain squaddy's account is closed. And they don't post anymore. Okay. So, anyway, he really honestly thinks he exposed us. He has exposed us. I'm trying to figure out what did he expose? Right, Aunt Esther? Like, what did he expose? Like, what? Why, 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 why? 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 <laughs> oh, Miss Scobie. It's easy to say that he's in the sexless squad. It's easy to say something like that about him. Right? That is easy. Saying that Christopher Boozy is the leader of the sexist squad. I mean, y'all got a bullseye on his back because he's calling out the lies and he's calling out the trolls and he's calling out Kingston Palace for that fake ass video. 
he's calling them out for that fake ass fire video and he's calling out the sun and the daily mail so of course you're gonna say that he's a squad and he's a leader of the success squad right what what did he expose not a damn thing nothing he didn't expose anything and it's just crazy to me how people who follow him and uh, and who hang on to his every word don't see the bullshit. Okay? It's like they're saying, yeah, he's going to expose the success squad. I can't wait. Sweetie. Sweetie. Didn't he do that podcast? Last week, I thought he had already exposed us. <laughs> what do you mean he can't wait? He's already done the podcast. So what did he do? He promised you that he was going to reveal something later on? Like, how dumb can these people be? He already did the podcast and he didn't expose nothing, nothing, not a zilch. <laughs> what? Saying that Obed Scoby is a part of the sexist squad? That's supposed to be, that's supposed to be a revelation? Talking all this nonsense about this Sarah person that was a squatty? That's supposed to bring us down to our knees and cripple us? <laughs> These people are past pathetic. Okay? It's like, shut up, fool. You got nothing. We are just a fan base. That's all the success squad is. We are a fan base, okay? However, what makes us different from other fan bases is the fact that we have influence and they can't stand that. That's what the problem is. We have influence. We're not like other fan bases. I mean, I know I just said we're just a fan base, but we are an extraordinary fan base, okay? We have influence and we have some power, okay? And that's what they don't like, all right? They don't like the fact that we call them out with receipts on their lies and bullshit. They don't like that. They don't like it. They post something that's a total lie and we come back at them with receipts. And they can't stand it. They're like, who are you to question me? Well, it's like, if you're a journalist, you have a responsibility to report facts. All right. And at the end of the day, all of these royal reporters, including Owen Scobie, in my opinion, they're nothing but royal gossip hacks. Okay. They are royal gossip hacks that are huge fans of the royal family. They are a propaganda machine for the royal family. They don't even compare. People like to compare them to White House correspondents. It's not the same thing, damn it. It's not the same thing. Not even close. Okay? They can't stand the success squad because we call them out in their bullshit. Okay. And our shit goes viral. 
and they can't stand that. They don't understand. They don't understand why we have that much influence. And we do have power. We do have some power. We do. Look what happened to oh, what's what's the dude that works for CNN? Max Foster. Look what happened to him. He did that bullshit ass story about Megan, <laughs> right? Basically saying, calling out these what quote unquote seventeen lies that she told during the Oprah Winfrey interview, spearheaded by his buddy Pissy Morgan. And what did we do? We emailed and contacted CNN every day with receipts. And all of a sudden, that story got pulled. Right? It did. It got pulled. I think what they did was they took it off. They weren't reporting it anymore on TV. However, it was still running on YouTube is my understanding. Look what happened to your Aryan Barbie <laughs> royal reporter. Look what happened to her. Vicky, um, what's Vicky's last name? Vicky Vic. I can't remember her last name. Arbiter, Arbiter, Arbiter. Vicky. her last name. Look what happened to her. Look what happened to her. <laughs> she lied. Some pranksters caught her in a lie. She lied. She claims she didn't lie, but she lied. She basically insinuated that she saw the Oprah Winfrey interview before it was aired. And she hadn't seen it. What did Success Squad do? We contacted CNN. We made our voices heard. What happened to Vicky Vick? She got fired. <laughs> That's why there's a huge target on our back, right? And, and also for just for the simple fact that we support the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Okay, but Dan Wooten, I, I, this, this man right here, he's a sad little man. If we wanted to, we can get hashtag sad little man to go viral Anytime we want on X. Okay, but he's not worth our time. We got, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, and, there, and there's another, there's another person. You know what? I'm not going to talk about her. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm not going to talk about her. But what's so, what's so interesting about this person is that they claimed that they were going to have a spring surprise about Harry and Megan. Well, hello. Hello. This person just released a book now. Well, they didn't actually release a book. What they did was they released an updated version of their book, right? This is a royal, um, I guess she's a, I don't know what the hell she is, to be honest. Um, but you guys know who I'm talking about. Um, this person supposedly um had a had a some had a spring surprise i mean they had a spring surprise i'm getting tucked tied here but this person who just released an updated version of their book about of course about harry and megan right supposedly there was going to be this spring surprise about the duke and duchess of success well i still haven't heard what it is what is the spring surprise Where, it's spring right isn't it spring? Excuse me. When was the first day of spring? We're past the first day of spring, and you released your updated royal book about Prince Harry and Meghan. So what is the spring surprise? But yet her haters hang on to her every word, talking about they can't wait. You can't wait for what? She just released her updated version of her book about Harry and Meghan. Shouldn't the spring surprise be in the updated version of the book? <laughs> oh, my God. Cr 
crazy, crazy. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Mr. C. <laughs> Mr. C. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking in the comments. Oh, where did it go? I saw somebody asked did um Vicky get her eyelashes back. <laughs> Leslie Leslie Ann Hector says, is that the bitch that who lost her eyelash? Yep. That's, that's who I'm talking about. <laughs> I can't believe she said that. That she was in so she was so stressed out that her eyelashes fell out. <laughs> see? You see what I'm saying? We're supposed to have grace for these people when they're going through a stressful time. Right. We're supposed to have grace for these people. But oh, when it comes to Duchess of Success, oh no. No grace for her. She's fair game. She calls it on herself. Anyway. And just continuing on how there's a target on our back. Now, this dude right here, right? Well, let me, okay. All right, this this guy right here, right? He is a quote unquote squatty. He's a quote unquote, you know, huge fan of the Duchess of Success, okay? And he's posted a lot of positive posts on X about the Duchess of Success, okay? So apparently the Daily Mail has zoomed in on him, right? See, in my opinion, they know who to pick on, right? But here we go. So this, this guy right here, Daily Mail wrote an article about him, how UCLA's race and equ uh, equity director, um, oh, I can't see, hold on, look at my glasses on. <laughs> I got bad eyesight, you know what I'm saying? But um, hold on. All right, here we go. So how UCLA's race and equity director who fondly calls Megan America's princess is spreading a vow conspiracy that Kate's cancer is fake while being paid $120,000 to uphold compassion. So why won't the university fire him? UCLA's prince of hate. Now that's horrible. That's not cool at all. Okay. That is not cool at all. Targeting people on X just because they don't believe that Kate Middleton's got cancer and targeting them, somebody who's a private citizen, putting them in an article like this, trying to get them fired from their job. That's horrible. Okay, that's just not right at all. And it's dangerous. It's so dangerous. Don't mess with people's money. Okay. But um, it's my understanding that he's a cancer survivor. Okay. It's my understanding that he's a cancer survivor. But um, it's, it, see how pompous these people are, they really honestly think that this man's supposed to get fired from his job just because he doesn't believe that Kate Milton has cancer. <laughs> An American citizen, they think he's supposed to lose his job just because he doesn't believe some pampered princess in the UK has cancer. <laughs> All right. Um, in regards to this guy right here, um, you know, I, I put out one supportive post about him, but that's enough from from for me. Um, the remember what I said. Sometimes we got to side eye certain squatties. Remember I said that earlier. <laughs> 
Well, he's a perfect example. I think this is horrible. And at the end of the day, UCLA is not going to fire him. They're not. He has the right to opinion. Okay. But um, remember what I said. Certain squaddies, you got to side eye. Okay. And he's one of them. Sorry. But he is. He's one of them. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go into the comments real quick, the chat, see what you guys are talking about. Uh, let's see. See what you guys are saying. Miss Alice says, Wooten needs to expose himself, come clean, get out the closet. <laughs> I think he 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 um, does openly, openly um, say that he's gay um but then again i could be wrong yeah i don't want to just assume that he's openly gay but i I think he he is right adrian says little do woo woo knows we have receipts before his dumb arse was born <laughs> Mr. Joseph says, we won't let you do to our phase what you did to Lady Di. Not going to happen. Exactly. Ooh, good one. C. Max says, there's no depth to their stupidity. There really isn't. There really isn't. There's just no... I don't think they realize how clownish they look. Oh, he did? So Leslie Ann says, what happened to the GoFundMe money he was getting? Did he pocket it? He had a GoFundMe page? Really? (laughs) That is too funny. Oh, that's funny. Excuse me. Reba says, these UK media trolls have been listening for a long time to us. Dan Wooten, Dan Woo Woo has no idea who he's dealing with. Go away, Danny, before you really hurt yourself. Exactly. Like, I don't know what they think the outcome is supposed to be. Or what the outcome they think they're going to get. It's not like we're going to dismantle and go away. That's not going to happen. I mean, we are a fan base. Hello, like we're we're a fan base. You know, it's like they. I I don't know what they're thinking. I I mean, you can't special K thoughts. You can't understand crazy, right? You can't understand crazy. You can't figure out crazy. It's like. It's like my grandmother used to say to me, when you see crazy coming, you walk across the street, right? I just keep on saying to myself, we are a fan base. But then it's like, I say, yeah, but we're a fan base that's got huge influence and some power. So there you go. Yeah, Don Lemon is gone. He he they let him go. But he was on there recently though. He was on CNN not too long ago. Um talking about his interview that he did with Elon Musk. <laughs> so I think CNN, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him back on CNN. And Don Lemon just got married. Congratulations. I call him Don Diva. A lot of people don't like Don. <laughs> I'm still in the comments, guys. Wow, are you serious? I see in the comments the UK government media want to label the sex squad as terrorists. (laughs) 
I mean, that's that's taking it too far. A fan base? So Prudence says, we need to get some of them off the view, and those reporters from England needs to be banned for repeating their lies on U.S. media. Yeah. You know, I saw, I was watching the Today Show, and I saw Russell, what's his last name? Russell, um, you know, little Russell, Russell Myers on the Today Show. Yeah. 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 But he, you know, he he wasn't talking mess or anything. He was just reporting, giving an update on um, Kate Middleton and was it Savannah Guthrie? She was like, after he left the screen, she <laughs> she um, looked at Carson Daly and she was like, so basically they don't know nothing. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. And I can't stand Savannah. Trust me, I can't stand her. But you could tell she was like, they don't know nothing. They don't know shit. <laughs> Excuse me. So Connie says, why is Whoopi so horrible on The View? I used to like her. I don't know what's going on with Whoopi. I mean, she act like she fighting hard and campaigning hard um, to be knighted or something, right? Right? I don't know. And you know, it's like I was telling um somebody who was all up in my mentions. I had posted something and you know, this person was just all in my mentions and <clears throat> I told them, at the end of the day, we all have opinions and you're entitled to your opinion. You really honestly are. You're entitled to your opinion. If you don't like Duchess Megan, fine. Okay, fine. But when I look through your timeline, and it's obvious that your account is a hate-targeted account, then me and you going to have a problem. Okay, me and you are going to have a problem because your TL tells me that you're a hater and you're fixated on the Duchess and that I don't like. Okay, because it really says more about you than it does her. I just said it over and over again on this live podcast that I can't stand the Kardashians. Okay. Now I have to admit, Chris Chris Jenner is kind of is 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 uh-uh. I'm start I'm starting to kind of soften my feelings about Chris Jenner. <laughs> I don't know why, but you know I I think she's a very smart business woman. But um, I just I just got no time for the Kardashians. Okay. I am not going to open up an account on X and hate target her and be fixated on her and and to be looking up news about her every day to find out what she's doing. Okay? So, anyway. So, all right. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Those of you who just joined us, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Megan, Duchess of Advocacy World Podcast. I am your host, Special K Thoughts. And right now, we are doing a live podcast entitled Sucks Talk, where we talk and have a family chat about our faves, the Duke and Duchess of Sucks. Sucks. Again, I don't know if you're watching on your smart TV or your laptop or your smartphone, but this picture right here that you see in front of you, 
this slide, I should say, that you see in front of you. People like Dan Wooten and the Royal Gossip Hack that wrote that article about the success squad for the sun, they are focused on the wrong thing. Y'all so focused on success squad when you really honestly have no idea what's going on with Kate Middleton. I'm serious. They have no clue where Kate Middleton is at. Okay, now Christopher Boozy, he un he uncalled bullshit, said it's a hoax that walk about at the Windsor Farm. He's saying that that was not her. Now, 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 Getty Images has placed a note on Kate Middleton's cancer diagnosis announcement. The video that she did, okay stating that the video may not adhere to their editorial policy. Think about it. Think about it. People like Dan, woo, 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 and The Sun, and The Daily Express, because I noticed The Daily Express, my God, they're pumping out stories about the Duke and Duchess of Sexes almost every hour. Okay, it's a distraction. It's a distraction. Okay. <laughs> The Duchess of Sussex, she visited the Children's L.A. Hospital March 21st, right? Kate Middleton did the video where she announced that she had cancer March 22nd. Duchess of Sussex was like, you know what? Let's pull the brakes on releasing this news that I visited the Children's Hospital of LA. Okay, let's pull the, let's pump the brakes on that because Kate Middleton just made this announcement. Okay, we did not find out about the Duchess's visit to the Children's Hospital until this week. Okay, this is the first week in April, right? Ever since the Duchess has released this news about visiting Children's Hospital. I mean, the trolling and the attacks on the Sester Squad has, 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 has just been crazy. It's been wild, right? It's been wild. One of the reasons why it's just been over the top drivel, hashtag Sester Squad, we're the biggest trolling gangster ever on in the internet is because of this. Getty Images has placed a note on Kate Middleton's cancer diagnosis announcement video. They're saying it does not adhere to our editorial policy. Now, how many of you guys are on TikTok? Go to TikTok. There are all kinds of videos of people saying that that video is fake. It's not real. Now Getty Images is backing people up that feel like the video is a fake. It's an AI, it's not real. Okay, all this hateration, all this vilifying the sexist squad, um, it's 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 a distraction, but they that's what the royal playbook is, right, guys? That's what the royal playbook is. Whenever you see a huge uptick in the hater racing brigade against the Duchess of Sussex and the Sussex Squad, it's a distraction. Dan Wooten, 
who was a self-proclaimed royalist monarchist, he should be telling the story and reporting on Getty Images saying that Kate Middleton's cancer diagnosis announcement video is basically fake. That's what they should be reporting on. That story right there should be all over the British newspaper's front cover. She is a senior member of the royal family. They pay for her. All this good health care that she is getting is getting paid for by the UK taxpayer. But y'all want to focus on the success squad? A fan base? Y'all want to focus on Christopher Boozy? <laughs> Propaganda. Distraction. I noticed on, there's an uptick on X about the, the, the fake baby bump. That, <laughs> really? We going to bring that up again? Distraction. Distraction. They are doing the citizens of the UK a disservice. Y'all want to focus on the sex squad. Y'all have no idea where Kate Middleton is at. Y'all want to focus on the sex squad and you have no idea where Kate Middleton is at. Okay? It makes no sense. <laughs> makes absolutely no sense. But it does make sense. Because it's a distraction. So what's really going on? What is really going on? What is really going on in the House of Windsor? Things that make you say, hmm, hmm. All right, so you know how a lot of these articles are coming out saying that, you know, the Duchess is sexist. She needs to tread lightly. Right, she needs to hold back um, and be discreet when it comes to getting ready to start her business Adventure, American Riviera Orchard. That she needs to tread lightly. Because she needs to make sure that um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? How am I trying to word this? <laughs> That basically she needs to hold back and tread lightly while making money. And starting her new company. Because Kate Middleton has or had or has cancer. Kate Middleton's not doing well. So because of that, the Duchess needs to, you know put her life on hold, put her business on hold, and she needs to tread lightly because the whole world basically will turn against her <laughs> if her business is successful and she's making all this money and being happy. That's basically what they're saying, right? I mean, they always say that. Right? They always say that. Um, that, you know, 
Megan needs to only be 50% of herself. She can't outshine Kate Middleton. Just, it just can't happen. Right. <laughs> and how dare her? How dare Megan? Go back on Instagram. When she knows that Kate the Great Middleton is not well. How dare she? How, 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 how dare the Duchess of Sussex go visit sick children in the hospital and read books to them when she knows that Kate the Great Saint Middleton is not well. Those sick children don't need anybody to read a book to them. Because Kate, the saint, great Milton is not well. I can't believe the Duchess of Sussex went to go, sick, go visit sick children in the hospital. How narcissistic can she be? <laughs> Oh, but here we have here Rockwaller's son, Tom Parker Bowles, is releasing a cookbook. And not only is he releasing just any ordinary cookbook, he's releasing a cookbook entitled Cooking and the Crown. And the cover of the book of the cookbook is a crown. And he's doing it while Kate, the Saint Great Middleton, is not well. So let me word it this way the queen. Camilla Parker Bowles, her son is releasing a cookbook called Cooking with the Crown while Kate, the St. Great Middleton, is not well. It's okay for him to do it, but oh no! Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, that biracial American who's living in Montecito, California, who is no longer a working royal. Oh no, she can't, she, she can't release nothing. She can't do nothing. She can't go visit sick children in the hospital. Oh no, 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 no. And she definitely can't start a business and make money. No, 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 no. Who does that biracial American think she is? Who, who, who does that biracial American duchess think she is? She's already done took our favorite prince and hauled him off to America. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. And now she's going to make money, start a new business and make money and be happy. While our perfect, special, fragile Saint Princess Catherine is not well? No, that is wrong. Who does that narcissistic woman think she is? I mean, you can't make this bullshit up. You really honestly can't. But yet, it's okay for the queen's son to release a cookbook entitled Cooking in the Crown. And it's okay for him to make money. 
That's okay. They have no problems with that. Melissa Murray. Squatties are very familiar with Melissa Murray. She's often a commentator on MSNBC. And see, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Sex of Squad. That's another reason why they can't stand us. Okay. We got bona fide, credible journalists that are squatties. Okay. Bonafide. <laughs> so Melissa Murray posts the queen's son, who was also his stepfather, the king's godson, has announced the publication of a new book of royal recipes mined from the palace archives while his stepsister in law is undergoing medical treatment. <laughs> No wailing and teeth garnishing from the press. Got it. The royal hypocrisy is astounding. It's astounding. It's like, I can't even know what more else to say. Okay. It's, it's okay. Hey, it's okay for King Charles's godson, the queen's son, to release a cookbook using his royal status or I should say his royal connections. It's okay for him to use his royal connections and make money while Kate Middleton is not well. But the Duchess of Sussex can't, she can't go visit sick children in the hospital. She can't do that because Kate Middleton's not well. Okay. And, you know, let me um, correct myself in regards to Melissa Murray. Um, She is a law professor. Okay. Got to get it right. She's a law professor. <laughs> and um, she does occasional um, commentary on MSNBC. All right. But she's got it going on. <laughs> Doesn't she? She's got it going on. Uh, and, you know, uh, Rock Waller's son. He's an ex cokehead, right? Isn't he an ex crackhead? Didn't he do drugs? Wasn't he addicted to drugs? <laughs> See, that's why they don't like us. That's why they don't like us. I'm pretty sure there's some of them listening to this podcast right now. Yes, he he he's an ex crackhead, right? Right. Right. He used to do crack. He used to abuse cocaine. But y'all want to jump all over Prince Harry for his drug use, past drug use. The Queen's son is a crack head. Uncle Gary crack head. But y'all want to jump all over Prince Harry and try to get him kicked out of the United States. Royal hypocrisy. <laughs> oh, really? I just looked in the chat. So a user says, somebody in the chat says, I'm just going to call you Jess, says, yes, he was Uncle Gary's dealer. Wow. 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 <laughs> he probably get high every day. Still. All 
All right. So scoop. <laughs> Anybody watch this? I haven't watched it yet. Scoop. It's about uh that nasty nonce Prince Andrew's um interview that he did. <laughs> The interview that he did that basically caused his downfall. I haven't seen it. It's on Netflix. Um, I heard that all of the actors were superb in Scoop, but I've also heard that it's boring. So I haven't watched it. I probably won't watch it. Right, I probably won't watch it. But one thing I noticed is when I went on Netflix, guess what was trending? At least it was trending on my screen. Guess what was trending? <laughs> Harry and Meghan's docu-series. <laughs> that docu-series is never, ever in life ever going to go away. But um, so I'm looking at the chat. Some people said it was good. Okay. Yeah, I've I, the constant feedback I'm hearing is that all of the actors were superb. But that it's it's kind of boring. And then somebody was saying that um remember when it was out that the queen had no idea that he was doing this interview? And I think he did it at Windsor, right? If I'm not mistaken. That the queen had no idea. Well, they're saying if you watch Scoop that the Queen actually did know that he was doing this interview. So. All right. All right. So here's some positivity. <laughs> so I saw this on X and not too many people have really talked about it. But um, the Birmingham, the Birmingham Anxiety and Trauma. Uh, organization, you know, they, they put out this post about Prince Harry and it says, thank you, Prince Harry, for being open about your journey with depression and suicidal thoughts to help break the stigma surrounding mental health. And then, then it has, you know, call us at, and it's got the number to schedule an appointment. If you want to learn more, click the link in our bio and, you know, they've got this crown and, and they've got a, um, you know, they're, and they're just basically thanking Prince Harry. Um, I thought that was awesome. I thought it was. Um, not too sure what spearheaded that, but you know, at the end of the day, there are a lot of people that really do appreciate uh, Prince Harry's work regarding mental health. Um, and, I, and you know, I just, I just thought that that was an awesome thing to see the Birmingham Anxiety and Trauma um, Organization give a shout out to Prince Harry. Okay. All right. Well, we have come to the end of this podcast. <laughs> um, before we end, I'm going to go ahead and look into the chat real quick, see what you guys are talking about. Bloop. That'd be a good idea. So H Knight says, I hope Megan launches her business on Archie's birthday of their wedding anniversary. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I've noticed um, on Twitter that you know how Megan's kind of, no matter what she does, there's always going to be naysayers and negative opinions, right? And I noticed that enough people were coming at her because supposedly they're just automatically assuming she's going to be selling jellies right because that's what she that's what her business right um because when she applied for her business she put like all the different types of um items that she may be selling or endorsing right and one of them was jelly and for some reason a lot of the naysayers and haters are zooming in on that the jelly right well you know what jelly makes a lot of money I don't know what the hell is wrong with people, but really good jelly and jam makes a lot of money. But anyway, they, they don't understand. People don't understand business, but they're really zooming in on that, you know, clowning her for her business, possibly selling jelly. And I've noticed a lot of the responses are, 
Well, damn. She's just trying to make money. Is there something wrong with her making money? What the hell do y'all expect from her? Like, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of the, the clap back, right? People are just like, damn. She's making money. It's business. What do y'all, what, what the hell do y'all want her to do? Like, hello? <laughs> like, she's just, she's going to be making money. She's providing for herself and her family. Is that a problem? You know, I've been, it's it's lovely when I see responses like that from non-squatties. Um, you know, somebody's like, what is wrong with selling jelly? And then, you know, they'll say, well, Prince Charles sells jelly. And then, you know, the response will be, yeah, but he's giving all the charity. Yeah, right. If you believe that King Charles... <laughs> okay, so King Charles is selling biscuits, jelly, just whatever he's selling, right? If you honestly believe that he's giving all that to charity, you are dumber than I thought you were. Okay. Somehow, some way, some of those proceeds are right, are going right into his pocket. Trust. All right, I'm back into the chat. So, Cynthia says, can anyone explain what Kate's incentive to come out of hiding if she's not going to become queen? <laughs> Me, personally, I think that whole situation right there, I think they got serious marriage problems. It's either they got serious marriage problems or she's really that sick. Yeah. If Megan is making jelly, Lorna says, if Megan, if Megan is making jelly, I bet it's going to. I usually... Kind of like Scotsatuberry or Huckleberry. She's probably going to come out with like avocado jelly. <laughs> I'll just play it. <laughs> but what if she did though? What if she came out with like avocado jelly and it tasted really good? Right? And it tastes really good. You never know. <laughs> you never know. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end this podcast. Um, so you guys can enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Before we go, Elaine Parker, who's been a member for 15 months. Congratulations, Miss Elaine. And I know Elaine is a dedicated squatty. And Elaine is from the UK. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Miss Lydia, thank you so much for the donation. And Miss Lydia says, love how you keep it simple and plain. No Fence riding of the content special. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Lydia. Let's see. Miss Connie, thank you so much for the donation. Appreciate it. Miss Connie, super sticker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All for success X. Ooh, I love that username. Thank you so much for the donation. We here at Megan Duchess of Advocacy Podcast, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then is it Ami? Girl, thank you for the donation. She says, I just want to say hey. Well, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Cody, thank you for the donation and super sticker. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Miss Alice, thank you so much for the donation. Super sticker. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. Thank you, thank you. Nutty Doctor, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nutty Doctor says, Where's Mumbles? <laughs> like I said, I think. Either there's some serious marriage problems or she could really be that sick. Right. She really could be that sick. Um, all right. Cynthia, thank you. Thank you for the donation. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. Want to thank everybody for the donations. I want to thank everybody for listening. 
Um, we're going to go ahead and end this podcast. Uh, let's see. Well, you know, it's almost that time of year. So, you know, we're going to start fundraising pretty soon, right? It's almost time uh, for Prince Archie's birthday. And um, let's see, Princess Lilibeth, her birthday will be coming up. So, so we've got some fun and exciting things coming up, guys. Um, let's see, anything else coming up? Well, you know, of course, we're looking forward to uh, the Duchess's uh, business adventure, uh, American Riviera Orchards. And um, I'm just, I'm probably more excited for the podcast, right? More excited for the podcast than anything, at least for me. Um, and I think Prince Harry's got something coming up with uh, Better Up as well, right? So good thing is coming up. Good thing is coming up. Um, yeah, guys, we got a target on our back, but you know what? You know, we don't care nothing about that because we are a success squad and, you know, we're a movement. We are a movement. We're a worldwide modified movement and they're scared of us. It is what it is. They're scared of us. They know we got influence and they know we got some power and um, it is what it is, baby. It is what it is. All right. So let me go ahead and get my music ready. <laughs> Let's see, which one am I going to do today? Oh, okay, I see it. All right, guys. So what, I was going to say something. I can't remember what I was going to say. Anyway. If you are not a subscriber, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> I lost I lost concentration. If you are not a subscriber, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I hope that you enjoyed today's live podcast. Um, you can follow us here on YouTube. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple, Apple Podcasts. Ooh, I am tongue-tied. You can follow us on X, barely known as Twitter. You can follow us on um, Instagram. Our Instagram page is uh, is picking up again. So uh, it's Megan, Duchess of Advocacy. We are on Instagram. So you can follow us there as well. We are on TikTok. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We are on TikTok. But there, my TikTok page is entitled Special K Thoughts. Okay. All right. So you guys ready? Are you guys ready for the Rebel Yell? I know you guys are. Okay, so stay safe. Don't forget to hydrate. Please make sure that you feed the chickens, okay? Feed the chickens. And at the end of the day, no bad energy. All right, we got a lot of stuff negativity coming our way but at the end of the day you know we dust them haters off our shoulders and we continue to support the duke and duchess of success all right no bad energy no bad energy i am special k thoughts i love you squatties so let's get ready to do the rebel yell you guys ready here we go. Continue to wear the SS on your chest because you know that we squatties are the best. All right, squatties. I love you guys. I have special K thoughts and I'm out and I will see you soon. All right. Bye. Oh, oh.